I am so excited you are here today because we are going to talk about leveling up your health habits so you can level up your personality. If being healthy and living longer and having more energy are not reason enough to live a healthy lifestyle, this is powerful today. Welcome, I'm Sherry Traxler with Vireo Life, author of Go Forward, 28 Days to Eat, Move, and Enjoy Life God's Way. I am so glad you are here because we are going to get some motivation going of why level up your lifestyle, your healthy habits, so you impact level up your personality traits, your character traits. One of my clients came to me recently so excited, she said, I have been wanting to become more assertive. I have been wanting to grow personally in that area, and this is doing it. Let me tell you how it's working for her. Part of healthy eating, especially intuitive eating, is not just listening to your body of when you're hungry and when you're not, and it's not just slowly savoring your food and stopping when you're satisfied. It's also asking yourself, what do I really want? Well, here's how this played out for her. When she would recognize that, you know, what I really want is blank. And family or friends were saying, let's go to this Mexican restaurant. And she recognized, well, you know, what I really want is a salad or what I really want is some grilled chicken and steamed vegetables. And that particular Mexican restaurant doesn't have that. She used to say, well, okay, you know, I'll, I'll find something I want and we just kind of go along. Now she's realizing, no, I can speak up for my needs. It can be a win-win. It can be what works for them and what works for me. When you are working on assertiveness, being able to tune in to what you want and then ask for it, or at least make your needs known so that they are just as important as someone else's is critical. And this is a way her healthy habits, choosing what's healthy for her, is also helping her in her work life. It is helping her in her home life, in her relationships, because this was the thing she discovered. When you're working on a personality trait, when you're working on a character trait, sometimes in a work environment or a home environment and some relationships that might be tough for you or friendships that might be tough, there are some things that are a little touchy and a little scary to go into. But where you eat dinner or, you know, if this wasn't her issue, but somebody else being able to have the assertiveness to say, I know we normally hang out together on the sofa, but I'm gonna go walk first. That's a safer place. Your health habits are a safer place to try out those personality traits. Another client, as he came to me, and he came to me intentionally to work on his confidence. Well, that is a personality trait. But what was interesting for him was he said, I want to work on my confidence because when I lose this weight, I'll be more confident. That was, that was his thinking was, I want to lose weight to increase my confidence. Well, lo and behold, I figured what was going to happen, happened, because I've been doing this a while. He contacted me after two workouts. He went to the gym twice and messaged me and said, I got my swagger back. I am back. I am confident when I'm going into negotiations. I'm confident when I am going into a meeting with a client or a meeting with an employee. After two workouts, he's obviously not lost the weight that he said he wanted to lose. But when you are saying that you're going to do something in any area, again, health habits is a safe place place to experiment with this. When you say, I'm going to do this, and then you go do it, what happens? You build your confidence. You build your sense of discipline. 
you build your sense of I am someone who keeps my commitments and that boost your confidence and certainly boosted his one of my favorite books the millionaire mind this book has so many references to exercise and athletes heart and eating well and taking care of yourself and how it impacts both your personality as well as the bottom line of your bank account let me read you some of the excerpts two of the top success factors for these millionaires are being physically fit and having extraordinary energy. They're also well disciplined and what better way to develop the personality trait of discipline than exercise. And here is a story of Dr. John Peterson, a dentist. The authors asked Dr. Peterson if he thought it was possible to maintain a positive mental attitude and composure without physical conditioning. And he said, impossible. I don't care who your parents are. Fatigue breaks out the worst in people who are confronted with job-related stress and financial risk. I would have to retire or do something else with my 10-hour days if I didn't exercise for an hour each morning. If you panic, you will make mistakes in business. And if you make mistakes in business, you won't be in business very long. Another personality trait that a client found was creativity. When he was working on his exercise regimen, he was following along like most people do. What was the media saying? The media was saying, and by media I mean the fitness industry, that you need to do HIIT workouts, high intensity interval training, or you need to go to the gym and do XYZ. Well, that just did not fit for him, but he didn't know what else to do. I said, let's get some creativity going. And as he found other solutions, which for him ended up being, I've got this huge laundry room. Let's clear out part of it and put in a boxing bag, put in some yoga mats and yoga equipment, you know, put in all this stuff that he liked to do in the privacy of his home. Well, what happens as you begin to find solutions in your exercise or your eating or your stress management that are outside the norm you begin to realize oh well in this other area of my life that i feel stuck and that traditional answers are not working you get creative the last personality trait that i want to bring out is one that's personal to me it's one I am working on and have been working on for probably a year or so now and that is mindfulness and I am using intuitive eating as an avenue to grow my personality trait my character trait of being present and being mindful in intuitive eating that I mentioned toward the beginning You've got, are you physically hungry? What do you really want? But then slow and savor. That's removing distractions. But it's also where I have leveled this up has been not just removing distractions, but also really focusing on the food and the experience of eating, even if it's just for five or 10 minutes. It has become a mindfulness practice and I'm still pressing into it, still working on this because it's a personality trait that I want to grow and it is affecting the rest of my life where other times I become present. If I'm in a conversation with someone and my mind begins to wander, I think, oh no, let's bring it back. Let's be present. Let's be prepared to be nowhere else, but right here, right now. And doing that during meals is helping me to practice that. Again, it's a safe place all of these the the downside the risk if you mess up in being creative with your exercise routine or being mindful with the meal the cost is not that big but you get to practice it in a safe area and then translate it to other areas of your life where the risk could be a little bit higher so you want to level up your health habits so that you level up your personality but now the question comes how do you do that? Well, this whole channel is dedicated to that. Also, if you have questions, put them in the comments. I'll be glad to answer them. And I also work with clients. If you need to go even deeper, 
be happy to talk with you about that possibility. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to subscribe so that you can be the first to receive these videos and not miss anything when you click that notification bell. Thanks again for being here and find your path and fulfill your potential.